and we're really thrilled that he's uh, able to be with us um, on this really important uh, liturgy during Catholic Schools Week. Um, and a special thanks, before I forget, uh, to uh, Prayer Posse for all their work this week to uh, set up our Catholic School Week uh, to run so smoothly and with so much positive energy, and to God Squad for helping out, and the choir, of course, uh, for enhancing this liturgy, which I know is going to be a great celebration of, our, um, of why we exist, uh, because we are a Catholic school, and that makes all the difference. So just a couple of thoughts that I had as I was driving into school today. Um, reminiscing a little bit, before I came to Spelman, I was an elementary school principal. And Catholic School Week, as you can imagine, for those of you who went through Catholic schools, is a big deal with, for the little kids. It's a lot of fun. So I thought it might be a bit of a letdown when I came to the high school. But on the contrary, I found that you guys are even more fun uh, than the little kids. And in truth, um, on a week like this, uh, it's really like just being with a bunch of kids, uh, little kids in big bodies. Uh, so you really recognize the what's important is that you guys recognize that this week is important and uh, that we should celebrate it in style. But I was thinking, you know, the greatest difference between high school and elementary school is your approach to your faith. In elementary school, it's really a beautiful thing. The kids are innocent, they're very accepting, and they're very pure. So we're proud of you for that, taking that bold stand. We hope that being at a school like Spelman, you will have the strength and the conviction to hold on to your faith, not only while you're here, but even more importantly, when you go out into the world. So today we are celebrating or highlighting superheroes. I want to suggest that you indeed have the potential to be the superheroes for our faith. You have the potential to be the superheroes for our church for the future. And I hope you can carry on uh, that as, uh, in your lives outside of these walls. I love that you recognize that we have one true superhero. I love that. I love that our Mass today will be focused on him, as it should be, on Jesus. Amen to that? Amen. And that's why we celebrate Catholic Schools Week. As crazy as it is, as chaotic as it can be, there's a good reason for us to step back and to celebrate and say we are proud of who we are. That's why we exist. That's why we're here today. And thank you for being part of that journey. At this time, do we have anyone to come up? Any student to come up? Okay. Oh, Matt. So let's uh, give Matt a nice warm welcome. Two, two things I should have said at the outset. Um, right after Mass today, uh, the choir um, has to get their picture taken, so be patient with that. Everyone should remain in the auditorium. We'll get that picture taken, and then we are going to acknowledge the students of the term. So that'll take another extra 10 minutes or so, and then we'll get you back to class. All right, here's Matt. Thank you, Ethan. Super. What does this mean? Is it a feeling? Is it an innate goodness in someone? What is super? The dictionary defines super as greater than awesome, yet worse than ultra. If you ask me, I'd say someone who's super is willing to give up everything they have for someone else. And that's exactly what Jesus did on the cross. It's common knowledge that not all heroes wear capes. And behind me, you'll notice our banners read, my hero wears a crown of thorns. Jesus gave up everything he had for us so that we could enter heaven. I think that's pretty super. In our church, our daily priests, they're heroes, sure. But they're not really super, per se. They're more of an aqua lad. Whereas Bishop Reed, whom we have with us today, is a real Aquaman. 
So let's celebrate this Mass, reflecting on that, and let's all try to be a little more sober in our daily lives. Welcome. Great job, now. Good morning, everyone. Would you please stand and greet our celebrant, Bishop Reed, and join in singing our opening song, Let the River Flow. Shh. Freshmen, you start the wave, and it goes all the way across, right? I'll tell you when. Spirit. Amen. Amen. Peace be with you. And Amen. with your spirit. Well, it's great to be here. It's the first time I've celebrated Mass where the smell of incense smells like bacon. <laughs> <laughs> Is that something special you do here at Carson's House? <laughs> on this Feast of the Presentation, on this Superheroes Day here at Spelman, during this Catholic Schools Week, we come together as God's family. We are deeply and truly loved by the God who we worship here at Mass today. And so, friends, let's take a moment just to call to mind our sins and ask that God would make us ready to celebrate this Mass together. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
Almighty, ever-living God, we humbly implore your majesty that just as your only begotten Son was presented on this day in the temple, so by your grace we may be presented to you with minds made new. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Let's be very attentive now to God's word. A reading from the book of the prophet Malachi. Thus says the Lord God, Lo, I am sending my messenger to prepare the way before me, and suddenly there will come to the temple the Lord whom you seek, and the messenger of the convent whom you desire. Yes, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts, but who will endure the day of his coming, and who can stand when he appears? For he is like the refiner's fire, and like the fuller's lie. He will sit refining and purifying silver, and he will purify the sons of Levi, refining them like gold or like silver, that they may offer due sacrifice to the Lord. Then the sacrifice of Judah and Jerusalem will please the Lord, as in the days of old, as in years gone by. The word of the Lord. Since the children share in blood and flesh, Jesus likewise shared in them, that through death he might destroy the one who has the power of death, that is, the devil, and free those who through the fear of death had been subject to slavery all their life. Surely he did not help angels, but rather the descendants of Abraham. Therefore he had to become like his brothers and sisters in every way 
that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest before God to expiate the sins of the people. Because he himself was tested through what he suffered, he is able to help those who are being tested. The word of the Lord. Be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. When the days were completed for their purification, according to the law of Moses, Mary and Joseph took Jesus up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, just as it was written in the law of the Lord. Every male that opens the womb shall be consecrated to the Lord and to offer the sacrifice of a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons in accordance with the dictate and the law of the Lord. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, awaiting the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he should not see death before he had seen the Christ of the Lord. He came in the spirit into the temple, and when the parent brought in the child Jesus to perform the custom of the law in regard to him, he took him into his arms and blessed God, saying, Now, Master, you may let your servant go in peace according to your word, for my eyes have seen your salvation, which you prepared in the sight of all of your people, a light for the revelation to the Gentiles, and a glory for your people Israel. Child's father and mother were amazed at what was said about him. And Simeon blessed them and said to Mary his mother, Behold, this child is destined for the fall and rise of many in Israel to be a sign that will be contradicted, and you yourself a sword will pierce, so that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. There was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Phanel, the tribe of Asher. She was advanced in years, having lived seven years with her husband after her marriage, and then as a widow, widow until she was 84. She never left the temple, but worshipped night and day with fasting and prayer. And coming forward at the very time, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child, and to all who were waiting the redemption of Jerusalem. When they had fulfilled all the prescriptions of the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. This child is destined for the rise and the fall of many. It sounds like a, like a line from a movie, doesn't it? This child is destined for the rise and the fall of many. So the gospel story that Deacon Joe just read is the story of the presentation. This guy, this old guy, who was a very devout Jew, Simeon, he had been promised, he had the intuition that had, given him, had been given him by the Holy Spirit that one day he would see the hope of the world. 
And so, by surprise, one day, as the prophet Malachi predicted, Mary and Joseph brought their newborn son to be presented to the Lord. That was the custom. And Simeon just happened to be there. And he couldn't believe it as he held this little baby in his arms. And he said, this child is destined for the rise and the fall of many. And he was right. He was absolutely right. In my backyard when I was growing up, there was a garbage pail. Back in the day, before, he's laughing, he remembers. Some of you might, very few of you might remember. Back in the day before the incinerator, you know, the garbage disposal in the kitchen sink, there would be a guy who would come once a week and you had a garbage thing in your backyard. It was a hole dug, a cement thing into a hole, and it had a metal cover on it. And the guy, kind of a lousy job, but he would come and he would take the garbage and put it in a truck once a week. And then the, the trash would, would be picked up by another truck. So it was the garbage and the trash. And I was fascinated with that, that garbage thing in the back, and the metal, it had a metal thing on it, and you pushed it with your foot, and it opened up, and you threw the garbage in. And, and here's why I was fascinated with it. Because my favorite episode of Superman, and I'm, when I say Superman, I mean the original television series, the one that I used to come home from school and watch at 4.30 or 5 o'clock every afternoon, the original Superman television series in black and white and in color. My favorite episode of all was actually a two-part episode it was the first time that I ever sat and watched a television show where at the end it said, to be continued, and I said, oh man. <laughs> I want to know what, what's going to happen. But in television, we know that promotes audience retention, you see, to be continued. Anyway, the episode was called Superman and the Mole Men. It was originally produced as a, a full-length feature movie, which happened to be 58 minutes, so they split it up into two half an hour TV shows and reformatted it for television. In any case, it was my favorite episode of all. It was actually the first uh, DC Comics strip to be made into a full length feature movie. The story goes that, um, I almost said Bruce Wayne, uh, who's Clark Kent, thank you. Clark Kent, Lois Lane, and Jimmy Olsen. They go to this small town because they're going to be digging the deepest oil well that's ever been dug, okay? And they go to report this story. Well, they dig the oil well after dusk out of this metal opening, this hole in the ground, come the mole men. Apparently, the drill has pierced into the subterranean home of the mole men. And they had these little, they must have been kids that, as actors. They were about this tall, and they had bald heads, and they ran around. <laughs> well, the whole town got very upset about this, very concerned, and they sent out a posse. They ended up shooting one of the mole men and injuring him, not killing him. Superman comes to the rescue, right? Nobody else would help this mole man except for Superman. He brought him to the nurse who removed the bullet, wrapped him up, and he brought the mole men back to this hole in the ground and sent them back down. And the mole men and this little town in Texas, everybody lived happily ever after. It was the best episode of Spider-Man ever. <laughs> Superman, whatever. I'm getting my, I'm getting my superheroes confused. Here. In any case, the garbage pail in my backyard always reminded me of the mole men. I was waiting for the mole men to come out of here. I love Superman, I really do. But you know what, and I'm, I'm saying this right from my heart to all of you, I love Jesus much, much more. I would not be standing here dressed like this if I didn't. Many times in my life, many times in yours, I have worn the proverbial crown of thorns. Life is tough. 
tell me it's not. Life is difficult, not all the time, but difficult, and it always will be until the end. It's a challenge to be a human being, to live in this world with all the struggles and the relationships and the hard work that we have to do and the sins that we commit, all of us. And that's why I truly love Jesus more than Superman. I really do. He is my hero. When I was ordained as a bishop, they said, you gotta come up with a motto, Reed. You gotta come up with a motto for your ministry. That's just what you do when you get ordained a bishop. Didn't have to think for more than three seconds. I chose the words that I lived my life by. Jesus sola nobis spes. That's Latin for Jesus is our only because I believe those words. I have been invited into a friendship with Jesus Christ over the course of my life, and he has invited me over and over again as, as early as even yesterday. I happened to be at the Westgate Mall, the Chapel of the Savior. One of the priests over there is kind of like my spiritual director. And about once a month, I go to confession. Because you see, I'm bad sometimes. I really am. And I turn my back on the one who is my only hope. I do it all the time. It's crazy, but I do it. But the greatest thing of all is I can come back and I can say, look, this is what I've done. Would you please forgive me? And I believe that as I'm there with the other priest, when he raises his hands and says the, the prayer of absolution, I believe Jesus is right there, and he offers me his friendship again. When I was a kid, I used to go to my parish church all the time. I've always been very devoted to the Holy Eucharist, simple gifts of bread and wine that are placed on this altar. In just a matter of minutes, we'll become the very presence of Jesus, our hero, our greatest friend, our only hope. And I used to go to my parish church, and I would just sit in front of the tabernacle, where I know that the, the Holy Eucharist is reserved, is kept, and I would just look at him and ask him to help me. I gotta tell you something. The reason for this school is Jesus Christ. He is your, my, our only hope. He loves us deeply. He comes to us in this Eucharist. And even when we wear a crown of thorns, he is our hero because he wore them too. He died on the cross for us. He's truly alive, and he's here in this room. You know, our religion as Catholics or, or Christians, disciples of Jesus, is not as much about rules and regulations and rituals. It is all of that because it has to be, because we're human. We need all that stuff. But fundamentally, it's about friendship. It's about a real person. I mean, a real person, not like a figment of our imagination, not something that somebody made up 2,000 years ago and we still kind of go along with it. No, it's about a real person who's alive. He rose from the dead and he's in this room right now. And he gives himself to us as food so that we can become who it is that we eat. He is our hero more than anything else, even Belich, Brady, Edelman, and all the rest of them. He is our hero, our only hope. It's true. And so before we go to the altar, we take a moment to present all of our needs and concerns for ourselves, our families, and for people everywhere to God in Jesus' name. And God's people in bringing Christ's saving mission to the world, we pray to the Lord. Lord. 
Let us pray for the Salmon community. We will live the virtue of obedience in the light of our gospel faith. We pray to the Lord. Let us pray that as members of our Salmon family, together we celebrate Catholic Schools Week. May our witness to be our faith put into action, serving those in need. We pray to the Lord. Let us pray for the students of Cardinal Spelman High School, that they be inspired to follow God always. We pray to the Lord. Let us pray for all families struggling in this difficult economy. May our Lord provide for all of their needs. We pray to the Lord. Let us pray for all the sick members of our Spelman family. May God heal them and return them to their daily activities. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Hear these prayers that we have voiced, Heavenly Father, and all the needs we have in our hearts. We offer them to you in the name and in the power of Jesus, your Son, who is our only hope and Lord forever and ever. Amen.
brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the offerings made here by your church be pleasing to you, O Lord, we pray. For you will that your only begotten Son be offered to you for the life of the world as the Lamb without blemish, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for your co-eternal Son was presented on this day in the temple and revealed by the Spirit as the glory of Israel and life of the nations. And so we too go forth rejoicing to encounter your salvation, and with the angels and the saints praise you without end as we pray. Holy, holy, holy Lord, indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks to and gave it to his disciples and said, Take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples and said, Take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of a new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of As we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be here in your presence and to minister to you. 
humbly we pray that partaking of the body and the blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Sean, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you through the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Taught by our Savior's command, informed by the word of God, we now dare to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. And may the peace of the Lord be with you always. destined for the rise and the fall of many, he who takes away the sins of the world, our only hope. Happy are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall.
to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true, with thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary. Oh.
heavenly gifts which we have received, O oh Lord, bring your grace to perfection within us. And as you fulfilled Simeon's expectation that he would not see death until he had been privileged to welcome the Christ, so may we, going forth to meet the Lord, obtain the gift of eternal life through Christ our Lord. Amen. Mrs. Demers and prayer posse will come forward to make a short presentation. <clears throat> We want to thank Bishop Reed for coming today. And Bishop Reed, I think you, uh, probably from looking around, you know that um, we're a t-shirt kind of school. So on behalf of Prayer Posse, we want to uh, present you with the Catholic Schools Week official t-shirt. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you. This was great fun. This is how you're supposed to pray. With the bacon, incense, and everything. Thank you very much. Well, I have a little gift for you. And it's one step up from a t-shirt. When I came in this morning, I saw uh, Mr. Paul Kelly, my old and dear friends, and I handed him an envelope with a date on it. And that date is the date that you will not have school. But I can't reveal it to you. I can't reveal the date. But I, I understand there's a fantastic freshman class this year. And among those, there's my friend, who's one of the great freshmen, Mr. Thomas Sullivan. Please stand up, Tom. And so, Thomas, when Mr. Kelly opens that envelope and reveals the date, Whatever day that is, when you take that day off from school, I now declare it Thomas Sullivan Day. <laughs> also, tomorrow is the Feast of Saint, uh, tomorrow's the Feast of Saint Blaise who was a, uh, a bishop and martyr uh, many, many centuries ago. Uh, but it's believed that the blessing that's given on the Feast of St. Blaise can heal us not only from diseases of the throat, of which there are many at this time of year, but from all other things that affect us physically. So if I could ask you to stand, and I'm going to give you the blessing of the throats, the blessing of St. Blaise. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Through the intercession of Saint Blaise, Bishop and Martyr, may God free you from all diseases of the throat and every other evil. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. But before we go, let us thank Bishop Reed for being here with us. find the bacon. <laughs>
All right, everyone, just a reminder, we're going to take a quick picture of the